Hello, good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here with all of you. I think that youth is the best asset a country has. So I think that when you go back to your own countries after you do this uh, formation or uh, education, I hope you're going to contribute the best you have. So if I can contribute a little bit to some of the ideas that I want to pursue in the future, OK? This is what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about who I am today, this very briefly. I am the CEO, founder of a company which I call a micro multinational. We're 26 years surviving, the typical living dead. And of course, we have better years than others, but you strive and you defend what you believe in. Uh, innovation is difficult. Innovation, when you do breakthrough innovation, which is what we do, adoption cycles are very long. But that would be a conversation for another day. Today, I want to talk about nah, I was doing back instead of next, you see. This is the polarity. You know? A mathematician is looking always to the left, thinking that's the first one she has to push, but it's the right one. <laughs> so ah, the formation of profession. OK, so when things are not right, we have to change them. We have to change them. It's our responsibility to change them. So I want to place here a phrase that I love from Martin Luther King. A social movement that only moves people is merely a revolt. A movement that changes both people and institutions is a revolution. So I'm aiming to create a revolution on placing women on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I will Hope that you get some ideas of why when we finish this short presentation. So lessons learned. What is important in life? I have a son that brought me an early challenge of having to raise a kid that had brain damage from labor. Okay? And he's incredible to do today. He does a lot of things. He works in our company in the mornings and the afternoon has a lot of activities. But he gave me the most important lesson in my life. He was small, I was washing him. He had these insects that you get in your bath, okay? And I was washing the hair, and he looked at me, he said, Mommy, am I beautiful? And I said, why do you ask me that, Alvaro? He was beautiful, he has a beautiful uh, faction, so he's, he's a great uh, looking guy. I said, why? Beauty is not important, I told him. Is inner beauty what is important? Is being good? Is being generous with people? Is taking care of others? And he said, okay. A couple of seconds or minutes after I was taking away the insect shampoo from his hair, and he looks at me and says, no, mommy, that's not what is important. He was a small, tiny guy, six years old, with a lot of phonetic problems. He couldn't pronounce Spanish well until he was 14. Only father, mother, and her surrounding family could understand what he was talking about. So he said, what is important in life, mommy, is to be happy. OK, so I'm a mathematician, and I value IQ, all of those silly things. OK, no, no, what's important in life is happiness. We all pursue happiness. So why am I blending this? Because part of your happiness is being happy with your job, being happy with the performance of your job, being happy of how important is the job you do in the society. So I think this is one of the things that we have to strive the most to be happy because jobs today take so much of our time. Balancing, job, family, everything is important. So second point, lesson learned, skills for future work. Disappearance of career as such is a reality. We no longer have that. We will have more to learn a lot of skills, become more uh, Renaissance man, knowing a lot. The internet is this huge learning space that we have. But the main skills circle around problem-solving skills for the future jobs. And for problem-solving skills, STEM provides the best chance of acquiring them. I'm not saying the only one, for instance. We can learn Euclidean geometry, and we learn logic and inference doing demonstration in geometry. But we can also learn logic inferences from syntax rules in a grammar, learning a language. So it's not an exclusive thing of mathematics, OK? But it helps because it brings you a lot of facilities into building those skills. The third point is that women present is in balance today in many places. In the negative, we have wages and participation. 
In the negative, we have career choices, and sorry for the misspelling. We have leadership, we have STEM jobs, access. But then on the positive, we have family buying power. We decide everything. We buy the car, we put the school, we buy the house, we decide the insurance. I mean, these kids, these boys think that they do decide. That's not true. Women decide. So you have to think about us if you are entrepreneurs in an internet business. Okay? We are the best buyers. So avoid the negative things in the future. I think that we want not to allow that we get women out of the job market largest growth we see in STEM opportunities. Job based in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So these are statistics you all know. I'm not going to go through them. But not, we don't even reach 15% in boards. We don't even reach in a more uh, uh, standard, more fair that you would say that would be the higher education. You know, we don't even reach that. 36% of board members are women in schools. But then, you know, 10% only have female directors or rectors in universities. So still, discrimination is everywhere. It's not only the corporate world. The high education world, which is supposed to be more rational and more logic and more fair, does the same thing. Okay? So we, in 2012, only 3% of women were presidents and chairmen. So th those statistics are important. Okay? So how can we change that? I'm not going to worry about that social aspect. I want to worry on only one particular one, the past 10 jobs by gender and what is going to be the future. In the past, we see that women in the normal jobs have a distribution of 48. These are statistics of 2009 of the US. Uh, Department of Commerce. But if we see the STEM jobs distribution, that's a different thing. We only, in the US, which is one of the most highly percentage participation, they reach 24%. It's not the case in the rest of the world. It's very low. We're losing 24% of women that should be there. Okay? And most of the jobs that are being, with the highest growth rates, are there. So we need women to start getting interested in science, interested in technology, interested in engineering. So are women not aware of the, or, or participants on pervasive technologies today? Of course they are. And let me show you some statistics that you might have never thought. OK, look at the red ones. So that's the female percentages. We are the best and the first in Pinterest, in Goodreads, in Blogger, in Tag, in Tumblr, in MySpace, and go on. OK? Only on those like Reddit and Orkut, and which are very male-oriented, we're not there. OK? But we are the leaders. So come on. We know technology. We embrace technology. We use technology. Why don't we build technology? OK? Let's do it. STEM context, OK? These are the statistics. OK, women in engineering, that's, that's to, to start crying and shedding all the tears. 18%. Mathematics and computer is fine. OK? But why do, do we don't take engineering? Because it's a cultural process. You would think that engineers are men. We are, have a cultural bias there. And engineering is the bridge between manufacturing and technology and pre-competitive technology. So we need engineers. You know, women, get in there, please. Okay? We're not there. Okay? And in the European Union, we have 49% of PhDs are women. We have 30% in the math that are women. But in engineering and manufacturing, only 25. What's going on? We need that. That's where industry is developed. Most of the products that goes to the industry, we need that. Not only the design and the creativity and the more abstract, we also need to put our hands in the earth and do a lot of things that we can. So makes it my today a priority, OK? STEM jobs growth, look at that. 2018 projections say that the rest of the world, all the jobs that are not STEM-based, are going to grow 9.8% in the US by 2018. And the STEM jobs are going to grow 17%. This is not only US, this is global. We know that the economy today is global. How can we lose that? Are we going to lose 50% of the labor population not getting in there? We have to start working from below, OK? Little girls. We have to incentivize them. Don't think that's wrong to be an engineer. Don't think that's wrong to be a mathematician. Well, what is this? We're not going to lose being girly by that, OK? <laughs> 
we're not going to lose finding a husband, a marvelous husband, by doing that. But this is something that culture teaches us. We don't want to differentiate in high school from anyone, OK? No, 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 come on, we can do that. Yes, we can. <laughs> so impact on firms of IT, OK? A survey indicated that most of the companies recognize that mobile is going to be the most impacting thing. But if we look at the third one, big data is the most important impact on real-time analytics because we're going global, internet is so large, and everybody needs to work on big data. So this is very important. We cannot lose the big data capacity because that's one of the greatest demands uncovered in the world. This is just demand in the US. Last year, 238,000 jobs without covering with the profile of analytics. 500,000 without cover in these big data jobs. Data science, 90,000 90, short, and so on. What is the profile? I mean, all of us women can do that, OK? You have to be seduction and storytelling to explain your interpretation of the data. You have to be a hacker and transgression. We are transgressors. We have to do artistic and creative nature. Of course, we can do that. Are we insight and abstraction capacity, basic science, math, scientists? We can do that, the ones that decide to. And then analytic and synthesis, convincing, prescribing. We can be data scientists. Let's prepare for that. The future is going to be there. STEM as a trending in politics. We know that Obama has been working on that for a long time. Okay? He even has this uh, in the website of the, of the government. In, as an incentive to women to get into STEM because they gain 33% higher pay in their job. So if they are in STEM, the salary is 33% higher. So please, why are you losing that opportunity of income? You can't. And then last week, if we read the news, Hillary Clinton was getting sponsored people, donors, the huge millionaires in the Silicon Valley to fundraise for her campaign. And the speech that has had more impact is the one that she concentrated on STEM and women in technology. It was very successful. So it's a trending in politics because everybody knows that we have to get women there. So last, this is challenge for thought. OK, this is a challenge that we have. How, we do, how, how do we do this? This is a cultural change. You cannot do this from morning to night. It requires to change the way we raise children, the way we talk to them, the way we help them in deciding what they like and what they don't like, and not biasing them by the grandmother that the daughter has to learn cooking, and she's not going to go to the special course on robots, that's for his brother. No, 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 no. Please make sure that you are vigilant on your grandparents, because they do a great job helping you take care of the children while you work, but be careful of what they are telling the children, OK? So, Leading by example is important. Universal examples in the world of fantastic women in STEM are there for the taking. But also use your local, because it's important that around you you have. For me, it was my grandmother. She was a seamstress, and she uh, was a widow. And she brought up nine kids alone by just suing for another people. My grandmother, my, my mother, with me, and that's my twin sister. Those are also inspirations for me, OK? So all of this is important. So what can be done? It is my dream. What do I want to do? I want to lead changes in STEM for women, OK? So I'm not talking about my company. And that's something that is already going on well. I think, what can I do for society? What can we do? And I think this is the project I would get more excited about. I'm going to show you two small videos uh, because we even have to change the way we think about toys. Please. Hi, my name is Debbie. I'm an engineer from Stanford, and I was always bothered by how few women there were in my program, so I've decided to do something about it. I'm starting a toy company called Goldie Blocks to get little girls to love engineering as much as I do. Goldie Blocks is a book and a construction toy combined. It stars Goldie, no the more girl Barbies, inventor, please. and her motley no crew more friends Barbies. who go on adventures and solve no problems. No more babies with, with bottles to feed. As they go through along, they get to build what Goldie builds using their toolkit. 
I grew up in a small town in Rhode Island. My parents' dream was for me to become an actress. They never bought me Legos, they didn't buy me Connects or Lincoln Logs. It didn't occur to them, or me either. These toys develop spatial skills and get kids interested in engineering and science. I didn't even know what engineering was. And now let's see one of the inventors, seven-year-old Anya, can do. Seven years old, and I'm going to make a conveyor belt. We're going to move it to the end because of time. Ta-da! You see the a smile of satisfaction of having solved a problem which involves mechanics, design, gravity and ingenuity and being capable of getting surprised as children get. We should never lose that child quality of getting surprised by everything we look around. So I just invite you that this is a challenge for thought. How can we solve this problem of getting women in STEM? Thank you very much.